This is the second uh, hour of uh, Morning Rush uh, Sport. It's a very good morning. We start off uh, with uh, football where it is no longer for the faint-hearted. Uh, it's the last eight of the 2022 World uh, Cup. Uh, England uh, will face uh, France. Uh, Brazil will take on Croatia. Netherlands uh, will face off against Argentina and uh, representing Africa. And uh, Morocco will be up against uh, Portugal. Now we are joined in the studio by Warriors uh, uh, midfielder. Uh, tell us uh, maybe what you think Kundai, uh, Kundai Benyu is a Warriors midfielder. He was at the AFCON finals, uh, brilliant display uh, that, uh, that he had. Welcome to Morning Rush. Thank you for having me. Uh, maybe before we go to the last eight of the World Cup, I'm so excited about the World Cup. Yeah. You can just tell us uh, what have you been up to? Uh, well, yeah, I've just been following it myself, keeping up to date, watching every game. Um, it's been exciting, there's been some upsets. Um, a lot of great players on display, so mm -hmm. now we're in the last eight, so we can just see what's going to unravel in the next few games. Mm. And uh, Kundai Benyu, um, at one time you were described uh, by Rogers uh, as uh, the best thing uh, that he has seen in terms of uh, some of the foreign players that he was coaching. Then your career, uh, maybe we can say it took a twist. Yeah, what, what really happened? Um, it's not one specific thing that I can pinpoint to say this is why or that's the reason. Mm -hmm. um, but more or less, you know, things happen, thing, the plans change um, that you don't expect to happen. Um, I can admit I made some mistakes during that time. Mm -hmm. um, I was a lot younger and I've learned from a lot of things that happened then. Um, so now I'm just trying to make sure that I stay on track and have a good career in football. So. And, and where are you playing at the moment? At the moment, I'm in uh, the Pepsi League in Iceland, uh, the top division over there, um, IBV. Um, so I'm just, I've got another year left over there, so we'll see what happens in the future. Mm, okay. if, even then, at that moment when uh, things seemed not to be going your way, uh, you did bounce back. You were at the AFCON finals and uh, some good displays. Uh, maybe this helps us to take you back uh, to the World Cup. You <laughs> faced Senegal. Uh, Senegal were knocked out by, by, by England. Just uh, give us an idea of what this Senegal team is like, because we then saw it uh, being beaten 3-0 uh, uh, yeah. by, by England. Um, yeah, the... As we was walking out, um, I was looking next to the players next to me. I see Mane and I see other other stars. Um, you have uh, butterflies in the stomach, a bit of nervous. Um, but when you get on the pitch and you have a few touches, everything calms down and you settle into the game, which is what happened. And we only lost narrowly uh, with a penalty, whether it was or not, is another discussion. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things we have to learn from. Um, so, yeah. And this Senegal side, of course, money wasn't there when they were playing uh, the World Cup uh, just, just recently before they were knocked out. But it, it remained a very strong uh, Senegal side. Uh, they were knocked out 3 0 uh, by, by England. Now, England are in the, uh, in the quarterfinals of this, uh, of this competition. What do you think uh, are England's chances against uh, France? Um, I think they have a very good chance. Um, they didn't get here by mistake into the quarterfinals. Um, and they have a lot of good world-class players, but so do France as well. So um, I think it should be an intriguing game, um, and we'll just have to see who comes on top. Mm. And then there's the Bra Bra Brazil versus uh, Croatia uh, game. Brazil, they have been very exciting. They, mm. they have been playing as if they had a practice match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's Brazil for you. Uh, Brazil always have world-class talent. Everyone knows that from when I was a baby up till now. So um, I'm not surprised by some of their results. Um, I think if, if I was to put money on it, I would say Brazil, Brazil are gonna, um, gonna win the tournament. Yeah, gonna win the tournament and reach the next stage. So, mm. and uh, Netherlands against uh, Argentina, uh, it looked like it looks like uh, it's a balanced affair. Yeah, I would definitely say so. Um, but with Messi on the pitch, you you really never know. So. I'd, I, I, if I was to back someone, I would say Messi and Argentina. Mm -hmm. And then the only African representative that's uh, left Morocco against uh, Portugal. Portugal, they have really been, uh, they've been <laughs> scoring goals for fun. Definitely, yeah. Um, 
Portugal are the same again with Brazil. They've always had world-class talent. Um, but I'm going to surprisingly back the Africans and say Morocco. I think they've got another upset in them after beating Spain and they'll be high on confidence. So it should be a good game to watch. Mm. And you mentioned uh, Brazil and you were saying you, you watched them at an early age. Uh, that then gets us to the point where we say, what really inspired you to be, to be where you are right now? Um, I would say uh, just me being a young kid, always kicking the ball around at home. Um, my dad always encouraging me to play football. Um, he's a big Man United fan, so we've always been watching Man United on the TV and everything. Um, and yeah, I always used to watch stars on the TV, so people like Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, mm -hmm. I always used to watch them and be fascinated by them, so it just made me want to do the same thing. Mm. And uh, when at first you were, you were approached to play for the Warriors, uh, a lot of people didn't expect that you'd uh, accept. And uh, that remains the case with a lot of uh, players that are best either in, in Scotland or in England. Uh, yes, they're Zimbabwean by origin. Some were born there, some were born here in Zimbabwe, but developed there in Europe. It has been so difficult convincing some of the players to play for Zimbabwe. Um, what are the challenges associ associated with uh, maybe making that decision to say, I want to play for the Warriors? Um, I'm not too sure whether it's challenges. It's just different environments of everything. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if, you play in Africa, if you're playing for Zimbabwe, you're going to go play somewhere where it's very hot. Um, a lot of places in Europe are quite cold, so the climate change and everything and then people play for clubs in Europe that may not want them to go, maybe. So it's quite a few things that come with it. It's not just a flick of the wrist that you can make a yes or no decision sometimes. So I think people should bear that in mind when they have opinions on whether people are going to come or not and be disappointed or not. Mm. And um, we've got players like Chris Nelson, um, quite a, a very good players that are, are currently playing in England. Yeah. You think if we can reach a, a situation whereby players like you and, uh, and those that haven't made the decision to play for Zimbabwe can be able to say, yes, we are ready to play for Zimbabwe, we can actually do well maybe at the World Cup? Uh, yeah, I'd like to think so. I think that's got to be the uh, objective. Mm -hmm. um, with, that, uh, with that being said, that, um, like I said, it's a lot of things that come with making the decision. So mm -hmm. it may take some time. I would say people have to be patient and mm -hmm. just see what the future holds. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, uh, Zimbabwe are suspended uh, from all international football by FIFA. Um, that, of course, means that uh, some of the local clubs can't even play in the CAF Confederation Cup. They can't play in the CAF Champions League. That, of course, uh, means the Warriors can't play in the, in the, Afghan, fi in the Afghan qualifiers, the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, how has that affected you as a player and maybe other players uh, that you, you, you interact with? Um, yeah, it's affected me quite a lot. Um, and I know other players, the UK-based ones I've spoken to, it's affected all of us. Um, as we all had a good time at AFCON, the one that last year. So we was all looking forward to another year of AFCON and hoping to better where we left off. Um, but then when we found out about the suspension, we was all just gutted. Um, so hopefully we can, that can be, situation can be resolved at some point and we can get back to playing football. Mm. Uh, that's um, uh, quite interesting. And um, concerning some of the players that are best in the UK, um, who, who have you been interacting with? Are there any one or two players? That yeah. Are, um, especially those that have played for Zimbabwe or made the decision to actually play for Zimbabwe. Yeah, the, the main ones I've kept in touch with are Tendai, um, Admiral and Jordan Zamora as well. Um, we always keep in touch, just see how things are going with our respective clubs as well. Um, and just keep in touch to see what's going on. Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Kundai Benyo, and uh, we wish you the best. And we are actually hoping that uh, the FIFA ban will be uh, lifted and you play again uh, for the Warriors. Uh